Previously on Jimmy Kimmel Live. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Kayla. Happy birthday to you. From Hollywood, it's Jimmy Kimmel Live. Tonight, people's sexiest man alive. From Pod Save America, John Favreau, John Lovett, and Tommy Vitor. Plus music from St. Harrison with Cleto and the Cletones. And now, Jimmy Kimmel. It was election day in a lot of the country. There were a lot of local races in 31 states, including parts of California. For those of us who live in LA, there was nothing to vote on, but I showed up at an old lady's um, house and spent 20 minutes in her garage anyway, just <laughs> poking holes in pieces of paper. Voters had decisions to make on uh, abortion rights, legalized cannabis, and there are a few gubernatorial races today, too. In Mississippi, this gentleman, who happens to be Elvis Presley's second cousin, ran against the incumbent Tate Reeves. His name is Brandon Presley. And you can tell he's related to Elvis because they have the same smoldering sex appeal. <laughs> I mean, that ain't a hound dog, I don't know who is. The polls are now closed. Uh, the key race alerts are trickling in, and with the very latest on tonight's results, let's go live now to our election center and Guillermo. Guillermo! I forgot there was election today. Back to you, Tony. I don't know. I, you know what? I forgot too, but and I, I have no idea who Tony is, but thank you, Guillermo. I mentioned last night that uh, a New York Times poll has President Biden trailing future incarcerate Donald Trump in five key <laughs> battleground states. And with the election less than a year away, some Democrats are suggesting that maybe Grand Potus should let someone else top the ticket in 24. The calls for Joe Biden to drop out are getting louder, but that could just be because he can't hear them. Meanwhile, <laughs> Republicans in the House are playing chicken with the budget again. We're 10 days away from a potential government shutdown, which didn't we just go through this last month? What are they, when did this whole country turn into a deadbeat dad? <laughs> Speaking of deadbeat dads, Donald Trump was not in court today <laughs> for once. His daughter, Ivanka, is in court tomorrow. But the ketchup on the walls is closing in on Donald Trump. <laughs> is trying to delay his trial uh, for his actions on and surrounding January 6th. In fact, he's trying to delay all his trials. He's a real delay hole, this guy. But his <laughs> lawyers filed a motion. They want to edit any inflammatory remarks in the indictment, anything that dares to suggest their client was responsible for the violence at the Capitol they want cut out. So the special counsel uh, responded immediately with a court filing they, that said, the defendant stands alone in American history for his alleged crimes. No other president has engaged in conspiracy and obstruction to overturn valid election results and illegitimately retain power, which is true. And I will also add, no other president tried to overturn the results of a hurricane with a Sharpie before. <laughs> We can't forget that. But tomorrow night, the uh, third and sadly not final Republican debate is happening in Miami. Five non-viable candidates will assemble on stage for no good reason at all. None of them will be president. Chris Christie, Nikki Haley, Vivek Ramaswamy, Tim Scott, and Ron DeSantis. What a line. It's like if all the Avengers were Hawkeye. <laughs> Most of the pressure is on Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, who will be in front of a home crowd and is reportedly determined to break away, finally break away from the pack. In fact, sources inside his camp say he's planning to wear his extra tall Gene Simmons kiss boots, <laughs> or as he calls them, loafers, to the debate tomorrow. And while things seem to be particularly ridiculous in this country right now, in England, they're, they're kind of silly too. King Charles delivered the first King's speech in 72 years. This is a tradition that dates back to the 16th century, to, I think, to King Fufflepump the 16th. <laughs> and
And while I get that there's a lot of uh, eh, pomp and circumstance when it comes to royal things, the optics for this new king in his crown and golden throne didn't exactly pair well with the message. My government will continue to take action to bring down inflation, to ease the cost of living for families, and help businesses fund new jobs and investments. Good king rule of thumb, while uh, when assuring your subjects you're working hard to bring down their cost of living, maybe don't wear a $45 million hat. <laughs> I don't know. But Charles is like, you know what? He's like, I, I waited 73 years for this. I don't give a crap. Bling it up. <laughs> Cover everything in gold and fill my chalice up with purple drink. <laughs> I'm the king. Ted Cruz has a new book. It's called Unwoke. It's, uh, he's, you know what, he's so cool. He's, um, <laughs> you can tell it's Ted's book because the dust jacket doesn't quite fit. It won't, <laughs> won't button in the front. But this is Cruz's fifth book. The last one was called Ted Cruz, A Time for Truth. You see him there without the beard. He also wrote Ted Cruz, Head Ooze. Um, he wrote Glued Pubes, The Guide for Guys Who Can't Grow a Beard. And of course, the New York Times bestseller, a partially digested rat, and other things I found in my chin pouch. There are many interesting musings and revelations in the books. Uh, he says, The Princess Bride is his favorite movie, and he's seen it hundreds of times, which is definitely not true. No one's seen anything hundreds of times. And apparently, he's not a big fan of late-night television. This is an excerpt, real excerpt he wrote, a late-night TV is virtually unwatchable. I love comedy, but watching angry leftists scream about how much they hate Donald Trump isn't remotely funny. It's pitiful. Well, all I'll say is it's an honor to be called pitiful <laughs> by a man who abandoned his dog in an ice storm to go to Mexico. But congrats, <laughs> Ted. It, and uh, seriously, I do want to say, you know, writing, writing a book like this is a, a huge accomplishment, especially for him. You know, it's very difficult to type with hooves. <laughs> if you know anything about me, you know I am a huge fan of sexy men who are alive. And <laughs> right now, there's a... a team of scientists who've been working at People Magazine Laboratories. They've spent the last 12 months crunching numbers to determine which of the four billion men on this planet will be called sexiest this year. And that man is about to be crowned right now, folks. Here he is, People's Sexiest Man Alive. <laughs> It's Ted Cruz again. Can you believe it? As you can see, we've disguised his face using uh, cutting edge hologram technology from our friends at Proto. And it will be up to our studio audience tonight to figure out who this is. Welcome, welcome, sexiest man. Thank you. It's great to be here. We've all, I hope, we've also disguised his voice. I think we've disguised his voice, yes? Have we disguised yes. your voice? Yes, you have. Okay, great. All right, let's solve the mystery. We're gonna do this 20 question style. Um, we have uh, yes or no questions are allowed, and that's it, only yes or no questions. Guillermo, uh, introduce us to our first studio audience member. Hi, what's your What name? is your name, and what's your question for Sexiest Man? My name's Stephanie, and my question is, are you an actor? Are you an actor, Sexiest Man? Yes. Yes, he is an actor. Next question, Lou, go ahead. Hi, I want to know, are you sexier than Jimmy Kimmel? Are you sexier than Jimmy Kimmel? No. Well, he's being modest, but he is the sexiest man alive. So yes, obviously he is. Next up. Are you married? Uh, yes. yes. Are you married? Yes, he yes. is married. OK, sorry. <laughs> Next. Are you also a musician? Oh, are you also a musician? No. Not a musician. All right. No. Who are you thinking, just out of curiosity? Harry Styles. Oh, not Harry Styles, but he is sexy, sure. <laughs> Next. Do you have any recognizable tattoos? <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> right? No. <laughs> no no tattoos. recognizable tattoos. Who are you thinking? I 
my, I'm already out of this. I, I, my, I thought it was an athlete. I thought it was Taylor Swift's boyfriend, but. Oh, you thought it was Travis Kelsey. Are you Travis Kelsey? No. Not Travis Kelsey. All right, next question. Were you born in the USA? Oh, were you born in the USA? Yes. Yes. Why, who were you thinking, Bruce Springsteen? Well, I was thinking Timothy Chalamet, but now oh. I'm, I'm not sure. Oh, all right, okay. We've got a lot of horny older women here in the audience. <laughs> um, okay, not Timothy Chalamet yet. Next. Do you have brown hair or brown eyes? <laughs> mm, no. Okay. <laughs> Neither one. Next. I'm Madison, and have you ever dated Taylor Swift? <laughs> I have not. Not dated Taylor Swift, no. Okay, next. Do you have any kids? Many. Oh. You say many, how many? Well, I have three children. Three, yes, okay, all right. Yes, next. Um, I didn't want people to think it was Nick Cannon, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you want to answer? Next. Hi, will this new title give you pressure in the bedroom? Not at all. Next. Hi, are you older than 40 years old? Yes. OK, that's a good question. That's how we narrow it down. <laughs> Next. What genre of movie do you um, act in? All. All, yes. And nobody said movies specifically either. Next. Hi, I'm Emma. Um, and are you older than 50? <laughs> are you older than 50? Yes. <laughs> Please do not be surprised by that. A wave of disappointment just washed over the crowd. <laughs> Next. Yes. Are you the golden bachelor? Uh, oh. <laughs> no. No, he's not the golden bachelor. <laughs> Next. Hi, I'm Jenny, and are you a podcast host? No, I am not. He is the only living American without a podcast. <laughs> yes, your question. Hi, are you blonde? No. <laughs> this is the worst batch of questions ever. <laughs> All right, I'm going to give you a hint, OK? The hint is star of one of the most popular television series of all time. Oh, thanks, I got a ding, okay. Hi, are you older than 60? No. Not old, all right, we're in that 50 to 60 range. <laughs> Hi, I'm Hannah. Was the hype of your career in 2004? No. <laughs> it's kind of an insulting question. Uh, next. <laughs> uh, have you ever been on Game of Thrones? No, I have not. <laughs> I know he's up and on Game of Thrones. Um, are you bilingual? OK, I'm going to give you another hint, OK? <laughs> yes, I'm going to start with you. I'm going to give you a hint, and everyone can share it. Played a doctor on television. Thank you for the ding. And? Are you George Clooney? No. No, but he was people's sexiest man two times oh, previously. Hi, I'm Keith. Are you Dr. McDreamy? Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, the doctor is in the house. Patrick Dempsey is the sexiest man alive. Wow. Look at the world is celebrating. Now, Patrick, thank you very much. <laughs> we are going to take a break, and I, will, I have many questions about this very well-deserved honor that you've received. Thank you very much. But before we do, I want to ask Guillermo, how does it be, feel to be the second sexiest man alive? Oh, great. Yeah. Happy, Jimmy. And congratulations yeah, to you. both yeah. of you guys. Thank Patrick Dempsey, everyone. Thank you very much. Sexiest man alive. Ta-da.